um, I remembered The Rivals as a play almost as a sort of perfect play really. Um, I'd been in it, my husband had been in it, a very uh, uh, famous production at the National Theatre um, in oh, the early 80s, 1980s, and um, I'd, I'd also been in it at the Leicester Haymarket Theatre, which is a very um, uh, reputable and um, uh, well thought of regional theatre in the UK um, and I'd, I'd, I remembered it as being um, a really really perfect piece, a, a real balance of uh, comedy and also a play that has a slightly um, a slightly murky, slightly darker underbelly and it's also very much a play about the younger generation uh, versus the older generation um, and against uh, the kind of constraints of parents and guardians who believe that they have the right to tell their children what to do and the younger generation's determination to be rebellious and to have their own way and to, to live life as they see Actors it. Actors are uh, delightful. They are hugely enthusiastic about the project. Um, they've started off very well. They've done some fantastic research. There's a there's a great blog that the uh, the dramaturg on the um, production has created. So this they've they've all been putting their research about the play over the summer on that blog, and it makes a very very good read. It's it's fascinating. I think that one of the great challenges is to find. A sense of relish and heightened um, utterance but it has to be real it has to be human these are real people they are human relationships uh, and they are relationships that we record that we should recognize and we should also recognize and understand the behavior so the notion of some kind of style of doing plays like this is a slightly vexed question it, it, it the great challenge is not to put it in inverted commas, but to really embrace the way that these people speak and make it um, real and pungent and witty without it being affected and an imitation of something that never really existed. Uh, but um, I think that the, the actors in the company are onto that and understand it. So it's it's been a good start thus far. It's set in Bath, which is the kind of holiday capital, the pleasure capital of the west of England. Um, Bath was a new city, um, new architecture, uh, a, a place of enormous elegance, of seeming refinement. We're setting it resolutely in period. Firstly, because um, it means it can look gorgeous. Bath was a beautiful, beautiful, and is a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful place. Um, so it, it needs to look, somehow the, the, the visual image needs to look very elegant, very stylish. The costumes I'm absolutely thrilled with. I saw all the fabrics and I just thought, well, I died and gone to heaven now. They, looks, they, they look beautiful. The costumes are in period, absolutely authentic. I want the whole thing, and the designers, both the costume designer and the set designer are absolutely up for it. I want the whole thing to look like a kind of wonderful Gainsborough painting. This will be helped enormously by the lighting, and the lighting designer has got some wonderful ideas for kind of making this happen. Uh, Sheridan used his own life, basically, uh, as the springboard for the plots of the play. He, um, he eloped with one of the great celebrities of the day, Elizabeth Lindley, much to their parents' disgust and horror. And he got himself involved in duels on her behalf. And in fact, in the second duel, he thought he was nearly killed. Um, his name and her name were all over the papers. It was a huge scandal. Everybody knew about them. So uh, he wasn't really... Um, desperate to be a success in the theatre. What he wanted was to be a success and a gentleman. And writing for the theatre, his father was um, a theatre manager and an elocution teacher. Uh, he kind of knew about the theatre through his father. So writing for the theatre was a way of making money, basically. Um, in a, it was a way of uh, supporting his wife. He didn't feel that um, the wife of a gentlewoman should earn her living by singing in public. So this great star, Elizabeth Lindley, who became his wife, kind of stopped, stopped performing professionally 
and he had to support her. He also liked, you know, he liked the high life. He was very profligate with his money. He was a great spendthrift. Um, so he wrote The Rivals basically to, to make money. Um, it wasn't a success to start with, so he took it off and he rewrote it um, and it became a huge success. But everybody knew what it was based on. Um, everybody was absolutely uh, intrigued and delighted by the fact that it was actually based on elements of his life uh, that, had, that had happened to him. And the character of Mrs. Malaprop is a kind of revenge on his father. Um, the mangling of language is a revenge on his rather pedantic father, who uh, was an elocution teacher and was very, very picky about the way people used words and pronounced words. So Mrs. Malaprop is a, is a way of paying his father back.